wanted to talk about the importance of understanding the severity of cross-contamination. Okay, now I'm not, I, I did a whole unit in my Mold Proof Your Home Masterclass on cross-contamination and kind of how to, you know, decipher what to take, what to not take, what to clean, what to not clean, what to put in storage, what to do. I'm, I don't want to talk about that. I'm not talking about specifics of cleaning and what not to move. I want to talk specifically about the severity of bringing spores, uh, fragments, and toxins from one clean place to another and what that does to your body. Because what I'm seeing is there's, and, and it's understandable, but what I'm seeing is um, people are moving out of a problem, which is great. Okay, because that's step number one. Remove the toxin from the patient or the patient from the toxin. If you are mold toxic, you need clean air. But what's happening is people are or don't have an understanding of cross-contamination or they understand it to a level that uh, they think as long as they're not bringing something obviously moldy, you know, it's going to be okay. But um, I wanted to talk about the kind of um, danger that it can put you in if you're one of those people that are very sensitive or in a very chronic state. So remember, every, everyone has their own uh, uh, level of sensitivity. You know, the sliding scale of sensitivity is people at this end where they may be mold toxic, but they need minimal work and they're not very reactive. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have people that are super sensitive, people that are down to half a dozen foods, people that can't tolerate supplements, people who are so chronically unwell, they're, they're bedridden or have cancer or have uh, great problems with fungal colonization all the way to aspergillosis infections in the lungs, severe sinus problems, not just the gut where we normally deal with it, right? So mold toxicity isn't the same between people. You have people on one end, you have people on the other end. And because of that sliding scale of sensitivity, that kind of dictates um, what you can do with bringing and moving things, okay? Obviously, you don't want to bring anything that's real moldy um, or, or uh, visibly moldy, I mean, but what about the little things? What about a blanket? Okay. Or what about um, a kid's favorite stuffy, stuffed animal or something, right? And this is where tough choices need made, but those choices aren't as tough once you understand what kind of danger uh, you could be putting yourself in. Um, because Mold toxicity doesn't get the credit that it should because it's invisible, right? You, you don't see it normally. You don't smell it normally. You don't feel it. People just get sick, right? And it's, uh, it's hard for people that aren't affected to understand how much damage this invisible thing, you know, that's why, you know, some family members, doctors just tell people it's all in their head, right? We've heard this a million times, but when someone hasn't been affected by it themselves, it's hard for them to understand how dangerous it, these items can be because they literally don't see or smell anything on them. But when you are at this end of the scale that we talked about where you're very sensitive and you have chronic health issues, a lot of times you can't move the needle on healing. Your body won't allow it until you have clean air, until your body doesn't feel threatened. Um, Imagine, imagine a little kid is, and I'm just making this up on the fly, so bear with me. Imagine a little kid's at the park and a couple dogs come up and corner them in the corner of the park at the fence and they're bark, bark, bark. And that kid just kind of shuts down and is hiding in the corner and is scared to death, right? Now, that's kind of like mold attacking our body. Our body's freaking out. It's trying to defend itself. It has so many coping mechanisms inside trying to keep everything running while under this duress and stress now imagine those dogs leave and now the child feels okay and safe to come back out well molds your body and molds the same way when it's under that duress when it's under that constant stress it can't do what it wants to do it can't do what it should do it's literally in a self-protective uh, mode and when people are at this far end of the scale, they need to be protected from that dog, you know, at the park that I just made up. Um, these mycotoxins and mold spores and fragments, because they've damaged the body so much, the body 
is literally just trying to protect itself and, and will shut down certain systems, including detox, like basic things in order to protect itself, to feel safe. And that's why these people on the far end need clean space. Not You can't just throw more supplements at everyone. That doesn't work. When people are really bad, they need the clean space to heal. And just like those dogs leaving, once the dogs leave, once the mycotoxins, spores and fragments and bacteria and everything else that comes along with a, with a water damaged building, once they're gone, the body can actually take a breath. It can start to unstress a little and it can start doing what it's supposed to do because it's not in this fight or flight. It's not in this survival mode. And when you're in this clean place and then all of a sudden, you know, dirty things start coming, mycotoxins, spores, fragments, as items you want from your old contaminated space come in, it's like that child starting to walk away to go back to the swings and all of a sudden it sees a dog coming at it again. The dog comes up and it's like, boom, right back to where it was. It's the same thing with mold. When you are at that, I know I'm repeating myself, when you're at that far end of the scale, you need to keep clean air. And that means not bringing mold spores, mycotoxins, or fragments because they stress the body out and can literally stop the healing process. And I know it's a pain. I know it's an awful uh, thing to try to uh, get through. And I know it's expensive because now you're having to replace some things that you already have at your old house. You know, so whether you're in an apartment or an RV or a family member's house, it's natural to say, oh, I will just bring that. We'll just bring that. And for some people, like I said, on the sliding scale of sensitivity, they can spray it down with EC3 or hydrogen peroxide or HEPA vac it or fog it or do whatever and it might be okay. But for some people, it's not. And it's those people that are very chronic and aren't able to get traction and healing that you find are constantly getting an exposure. And I know it's hard. I know it's easy for me to say get in a clean space and don't have anything from your old, from your old world, everything you knew. But you literally, sometimes, for the people in the most chronic state, need a clean space and can't go keep go uh, keep going back into that space or have items from that space brought to them. I remember um, one lady's story. I read it. I didn't. I didn't talk to her, but she she was extremely mold sick. I think the kids were too, but she was really bad. And they had moved in with her husband's uh, parents with the in laws because their place was moldy and she was starting to feel better there and she had told them don't bring any items in because she knew it would affect her and sure enough without telling her they brought a mattress and and a mattress is one of the worst right you sit on it you lay on it all the air comes out and any toxins with it and spores and that house was ruined for her because that went into the air not because there was so much there that it was going to make everyone sick no but it was enough for her body to freak out and start that whole inflammatory process all over again as her body's freaking out going something's wrong this thread is back and i've heard this story a million times i hear from people that burn a home after home after home as they were learning the hard way what they can bring with them and what they can't and by burn it i just mean they can't use it anymore so they got out of a space went to a, a clean home brought too many things with them, all of a sudden that home was no good. Go to the next home and they bring less and then maybe they, it was still too much for their bodies. So I know this was a giant video, but this is, there's the people that are at the far end of this sliding scale of sensitivity that are super chronic need to understand this and their family needs to understand this and their friends need to understand this. So share this video with whoever you want, but the body will literally just burst into flames again inside, you know, uh, figuratively, the inflammation just spikes when it gets a sense of that original threat that caused so much damage in them. Again, it's not that there's enough there necessarily to create a new problem or to make anyone else sick, but because of their level of sensitivity, the body, the immune system, the limbic system is all, the nervous system just freaks out at the sight, at the smell, at the exposure of that threat, just like the kid with the dog. Sees the dog, freaks out again. Maybe the dog's on a leash, 
Okay, and someone's holding it, but they're still scared to death because the dog's barking and, the, and they're fearful. That's what it's like with mold. Soon as you get that uh, exposure again, it just freaks right out. Anyway, I think I made my point. I report, it repeated myself about 50 times. I've been meaning to make a video like this because I, I, I know multiple people that are affected like this, that are at that end, and they need support from those around them, and they need to understand for themselves how important that is. And if they are bringing anything in, uh, they have to make sure it's, you know, it's not something that's made out of uh, fabric and that it's something that's cleaned extremely, extremely well because you don't want to be taking a risk in your new space. All right. I hope that helps, guys. Do you have questions about mold in your home or body? Book a consultation with Matt, a.k.a. The Mold Man, to guide your home and body to the next level of healing.